Hammer mal auf jeden Fall hier am Friedhof liegen. Na, warte, schaust du mal bitte bei Uri Siegfried und Kohn ist das dann. Siegfried und Hedi. Hedwig. Meine Großeltern und das war mein Onkel. Und das sind äh, äh, Freunde. Nee, Mary, das ist Metzel. Metzel ist also ein Name, who appears sometimes in, in St. Pölten. Mm -hmm. But she was also from, from uh, Bohemia. And, yeah, and these are the children. All of us were born in New York. Großmutter passed away when I was only about eight years old. We didn't get to know her too well. And the grandfather passed away 20 years before I was born. So I didn't know him personally. But the stories, the stories. So from the age of, well, reason, when I could really understand what was happening and understand my father and mother's enthusiasm, Dad had a picture of the synagogue on his dresser of Sam Curtin. And I always thought it was a picture. It was brown and white sepia. And then Martha Kyle, who we so luckily met later and has become a dear friend of the family, told us it was actually a postcard, a marketing postcard to get money to help weil die Idee ist dadurch entstanden, dass ich eigentlich vor mittlerweile 20 Jahren das erste Mal beim Nachkommen treffen in, in Honems in Vorarlberg war. Das ist äh, ehemalige jüdische Gemeinde, jetzt jüdisches Museum. Und da war ich zweimal dabei und habe das miterlebt. Und habe dann ja, ähm, begonnen, am Institut für jüdische Geschichte Österreichs zu arbeiten. Und seitdem, das ist jetzt schon wirklich ähm, mehr als zehn Jahre her, ist ähm, diese Idee irgendwie gewachsen. I didn't know almost anything about my grandfather, just that he was almost starving and suffering from cold and sickness all the way in Wien and then in Kielce Ghetto. And It was for me very impressive to see a Nazi document, especially one document with stress that my father, the Juden, Karl Weinstein, weigerte sich, refused to sell his house in Markersdorf. Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome. Da gibt es ja auch eine Tour durch St. Paul. Na bitte, du hast das am Dienstag sowieso. It's great to be here. Your ancestors have been members of the Israeli Kultus Gemeinde St. Pölten. Your families have been uprooted and expelled, and many members have been murdered. You all seized the opportunity to follow their traces, which can be a chance to understand more about them and more about the situation and the history, but perhaps it's also an emotional challenge. Willkommen, bienvenidos, welcome, Ruchim Habayi. Adina, Menachem und Ayah im Nazir. Gadi, Juli, Brot, ein Wort, ein Kapierlis. Wir haben die Rolle gelebt. Peter Brandt und Helmut Karo. 
Ein weiter von der Rummel ist hier. Karin Regulé Goldschmidt und Herr Sister Nina Moldauer. Ja, wer Frischmann Family. Peter is not here as I heard, but Tina, his daughter. The other picture I could find of your family. Yeah, Leopold. Yeah. From family class and Hella, uh, quite a lot of people are here. Edward Beck is here. <laughs> and Jose Contreras. <laughs> Anton and Ruth Friedman. <laughs> and Paul Heller and Michel Lissan. Ich sage Liora Boy, ich helfe den Abi ist gut. Ah, der hier. What a timing. Bruder Netta Moseri. Mada and Dota. Ja. Und Bruder von Emma Kohn, Ruth Spitzer ist hier. Patrick Kugel und David Beck. Kopfstein, are they here? Ja, 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 right. The Rafinovic family is here. Marion Lewis. Sebastian, and Thomas Nagata, and he's a boy. Doron, Shiri, Lior, and Adi. Ronny Schwerin, and Lior, Marien. Family Schwebe. Pedro, yeah, very good. Thank you. My parents and I could emigrate to Palestine. I was 16 months old. I went to kindergarten and elementary school in Batyam, a small village near Tel Aviv, on the, on the sea with a nice beach. In 1947, we immigrated to Austria. For me, a big adventure. When we came back, I saw the destroyed synagogue as a boy of 10 years, pigeons flying out from the windows, and it was forbidden to enter the area. Only five families came back to St. Pölten. Too few for a new community. So St. Pölten became part of the Vienna Jewish community. My cousin and I are the last ones in St. Pölten. And we are happy that you did not forget us. We wish you a nice stay in Austria. What was that? <laughs> it was hilarious. The normal people are sleeping already. <laughs> so did you manage? Oh yes. Yeah, great. <laughs>
Es ist sicherlich etwas ganz Besonderes, wenn ich Sie als Nachkommen von der in der NS-Zeit aus der Költen und Umgebung vertriebenen Familien heute hier im Rathaus recht herzlich begrüßen darf. Okay, stop. Ja. <lacht> oh, I can't keep in mind such a lot. Ah, that's great. So, it's, it's, really, uh, it's really something very special that you are welcomed here by the Vice Mayor of St. Pölten in the city who expelled your ancestors. Ich danke Frau Dozentin Martha Keil und ihrem Team vom Institut der Jüdischen Geschichte Österreichs für die Initiative, für diesen historischen Besuch. Okay, many thanks to us. Unser <laughs> Dank. <laughs> Unser Dank gilt auch den Schülerinnen und Schülern des Borg St. Pölten und des Gymnasium Josefstraße. Diese haben im Rahmen eines Schulprojektes, begleitet von den Experten des Jüdischen Institutes, die Schicksale jüdischer Familien, insbesondere St. Pöltener Familien, aufgearbeitet. Sie werden als Nachfahren diese Orte, diese Lokalitäten anschauen, besichtigen, wo Ihre Familien 1938 lebten. Ich wünsche Ihnen einen interessanten Aufenthalt mit zahlreichen Aufschlüssen über St. Pölten Jüdschers Geschichte, die auch und vor allem die Geschichte ihrer Familien war. Just remember where you left it. When you understood uh, Christoph in the, in the morning when he told about the first Jewish cemetery where there is no gravestone left, not even one, everything stolen in the, in the Nazi time. So this second uh, cemetery uh, was established in 1906 because the city uh, made this big cemetery for the whole city and for all religious communities and as well for the Jewish one. So this was not a uh, forcement or something, it was nothing special. It was more, I would even say, an act of integration, that the Jewish cemetery should be a part of the general municipal uh, cemetery. Uh, it's really great that this, this house is still functioning even. There are burials here and nothing happened to this. Yeah, it was not harmed. So we can go outside and <laughs> look the ones who were born, death is waiting for them. The ones who are dying, life is waiting for them. You see these very nice graves, they are all functionaries of the community. Here is Welish family, I think this is where is. Yeah, here, okay, <laughs> yeah, here. Generally, almost every gravestone now is online, uh, copied with Hebrew translation. Christoph and myself and another colleague copied it many, many years ago. 20 years ago. When it was 10. 96, 96, yeah, yeah. yeah, so a long time ago. And now, slowly, slowly, it's getting online. You see some graves like Clara Körner and Gusti Körner, umgekommen in Theresienstadt. It's not only the gravestones of the people buried here, it's also a commemorial place for the Shoah victims. We have so many cameras. Mm. So many families. Not out of focus. We have many graves here that disappear. I see that there are. We have 96 names, which we we do not know where they are. Some we have six graves without names, where we do not know who they are. And we have especially kids uh, uh, people from the elderly home, people from the hospital had no money and they died. They just we we believe that they just get metal metal. Uh,
thumb stones. And so corrosion, vandalism, and so they disappear. But we know it from the files that they have to be here. Were in the 60s and the 50s, always heard that, and some people had had parents who had suitcases, you know, yeah, waiting you who, you, who were. So, so you yeah, leave it at the yeah, office? yeah. And my and my father always said, you know, we have to, you have to look at Israel as you know the place you can go to, and I'd say, I'm I, I'm American, and I'd be here, but if I had to go anywhere, I'd go to Canada. Oh, wow! Isn't that amazing? Yes. Yeah, that's uh, my great grandparents. Oh, really? Uh huh. Yep. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty wild to even see that. Black place. Thank you. Apariente. Uh huh. And what is this? Which? Hey, Mary. Mary. Amelia Neumann. Which is the doctor? A tree girl right Mary. next to it. Her father. This tree is covered by a tree. I, -G. I don't see it. Dad, there's another Neumann. All right, let's see if it's the right one. It's Matilda. 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 You know? If Amaya was his daughter, she might have been naming after her grandfather. But this is what we're going to look for. Yeah, that's what he's going to look for. Research. Research. Yeah. Give you yeah. some further There's information. A you found the grave. <laughs> My God. I know from day one, I was named after one of my father's aunts. And he spoke, so he loved her. It was one of my grandmother's uh, sisters. Gross Matilda's sister. And her name was Matilda. And I am called a muttle in Yiddish. And when I started Hebrew school, the rabbi said to me, no, this is not a Hebrew name. So my Hebrew name became Mati. So my whole life now, my name has been Mati. But I've been named after Matilda Neumann, because that was her maiden name. So in the cemetery, we found Matilda Neumann's marker, her stone. And you know, this is like crazy time. <laughs> it's just, am I really here? Is this real? Is this happening? It's and important to me to see where I came from. Yeah, it's like all about the past, I guess, and knowing that you can who, who find your relatives were, who your ancestors were, and, finding and where they were buried. And so you can maybe come back here again now that we know where <laughs> And also finding your relatives and where they were buried. So you're related we to We might Weinstein. be related to Weinstein. Yeah. Hi, you. There's a Chaim Weinstein yeah, walking around. Yeah, this is Chaim Weinstein. Right. Are, are, you, are you relatives? We might be. Well, we don't know. <laughs> we could be fourth cousins. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I found already two graves. And maybe a lot of relatives from the USA. And here, here it is Max Neumann, but the dates. You have to check the dates. April. Died or, or gone? Died. Died, yes. Okay, exactly. This is Max Neumann. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in this synagogue of Yeah.
welcome you here in Austria and we are glad that you undertook such a long journey to come here. We would like to present you the history of the Familie Reis and Anton Glaser in St. Pölten. Heinrich and Amalia Nussbaum were the parents of Anna Reis, Nussbaum by birth, and who had a daughter with Anton Glaser. Anna Reis inherited a house located in Litzenstraße 52 from her father Heinrich Nussbaum. In their first years of marriage, Hermann, Anna and of course her daughter Johanna lived next door in the flat in Litzenstrasse 50. After the war, Anna and Johanna joined Hermann Reis in the United States of America, where they established a new home for themselves. Her estranged father, Anton Glaser, was not so lucky. He had a far more gruesome fate. He had to work in a labor camp, Johanna said. And my father had to go to Arbeitsdienst and he was there and worked in the concentration camp Ebensee. This is the first time I've seen the ant's house. Yes, thank you. Very interesting. But there are direct descendants. Paul Heller, uh, the cantor who sang yesterday, He's a direct descendant from here. Ich weiß jetzt, was die Johanna eine Tante von meiner Großmutter war. Und das ist also es erissert, wie sagt man so? Ich krieg so ich ganz die ganze Zeit jetzt unglaublich. Habe ich nicht mehr gedacht. From the Nussbaum. This is the Nussbaum. Yeah. The number three you see there. <laughs> Our focus was on the couple Ernst and Rosa Schumhof and their daughters Eva and Liesl. The Schulhof family is a great uh, example of uh, the dislocations of the many Jewish family in St. Pölten and all over Austria because they had, as they mentioned, had to move four different times in St. Pölten when they finally were forced out of St. Pölten altogether and forced to move to Vienna. So thank you very much for this. And now we are going to the last part of the tour at Radetzky Straße 4. After the Second World War, Eduard Honisch fled to Salzburg from the Russians where he was put into prison. After his release, he was very concerned with his future and he pleaded for his belongings. He wrote to the authorities in 1948. 
In consideration of my miserable situation, I sleep on the floor, I don't own anything, only that of which I wear on my body, and even a big part of that is from the nations. Good! Then! Of course, I'm sorry, I just thought. Please! Just come a little bit closer. What part of this uh, exercise was the most uh, meaningful to you? Uh, what What did you learn that maybe you didn't know? From the project. From um, the project. You always hear about Nazi Germany and the war, but actually experiencing it being here in my home city was like shocking me because like, like that's the place I live at and the people here did such things to the Jews and I think that's like just to experience that, that this really happened and it's not just like, and to see all the buildings. Maybe I speak for other descendants. Yes. Yeah. I, I congratulate all of you for uh, looking this uh, in the eye and uh, seeing it for what it was and for presenting such uh, important yeah. stories so that it doesn't happen again. Thank you. countryside but mostly there they were they sent were and concentrated in Vienna, in Vienna. Yeah. We because because the machine runs yeah. there so so it's it's it could have been the lawyer Leonardo Leo Leonardo Leo 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 Und dann am nächsten Jahr, als der Jude war, haben wir ihn weggeschmissen. Und das war fast der Tod für ihn, weil er war so, man hat ihn immer so, er war, wie sagt man, he was proud of his economic position. From one time to another. Nothing, no. And I think he died then, not a longer, more of his sad Franz, Mary Sarah Pfeiffer, Kopstein Pfeiffer, yeah. and my father Ulrich uh, Pfeiffer. Yeah. Oh. And this is in Plosdorf? Yeah. Yeah, that is in Plosdorf. And that is the house from Plosdorf. I think it was a weekend house. Like for the weekend, uh, they went there. And this is the how they have to sell the house for the Nazis. Thank <laughs> you. 
I've admired the work of this staff uh, for a long time since my first visit here, and I hope we can form a Friends of San Poten group to support their work, to, to do what is necessary to revive the community, uh, build the community, and make it a comfortable community so that we don't have to wait 75 years for another worship service. <laughs> and at last, uh, we would like to welcome Butch Pizza <laughs> to our family for a new addition that we found. It's not only special, it helps us healing because our mother, who died not too long ago, had so much anger in her. She was angry all her life. She hated Austria, everything Austria. And <clears throat> thanks to you, she started to overcome this. In 1998, she came here unwillingly. She didn't want to come, she didn't want to know, she didn't want to share, she didn't want anything. But she came here all the same, and her wall, like she said, started to crumble down. And until the last days of her life when her past caught up with her again, because the last language, she died two years ago, the last, the only language she spoke, she never ever spoke German again, except in her last two weeks, she spoke nothing but German. Mm. It started back, the German language, the German way, everything, the Austrian way, came back to her. So, thanks to, to you, thanks to the Institute, thanks to your wonderful team and organization, you started healing and helping our mother. Now, you did the same for us. <laughs> Thank you very much from all of us. <laughs>